We have two exceptional leaders with us now who have played a pivotal role in shaping Amazon's success story in India. Let me first invite a 25-year-old Amazon veteran. In his current role, he leads international consumer businesses for Amazon across Europe, UK, Japan, India, China, Brazil, Mexico, Turkey, the Middle East, and Australia. He also oversees consumer payment, prime books, consumer marketing, and engagement, and Amazon business. Please do welcome Mr. Russell Grandinetti, the Senior Vice President, International Consumer Business. <laughs> Great to have you, Russ. And let me now invite the man who's known for his customer obsession and outstanding business development skills, transforming the online business trends in India. Please give a huge round of applause for Mr. Amit Agarwal, SVP Emerging Market. <laughs> Well, thank you both so much for joining us and looking forward to what you have to say on the path ahead. But, Russ, if I could just start with you. Um, how, I understand it's not your first time to India. Uh, how's, no. how's Delhi looking to you? Uh, it is a great pleasure to be here. I really just want to say thank you to everybody who's made the time to, to join the conference here. Uh, we're all very excited to be back doing it in person. Yeah. So to, get, to be here in person and get the chance to see this group, to feel the energy is great. But... You know, I, you're right, I have been coming to India for a long time. In fact, I can say, as my job, in my job at Amazon, um, it's been, I've been coming here longer even than Amazon India has been around. Um, some of you may know that, that India has played a very important role in the company's history well beyond the consumer business that we have here. Um, I've been doing this job since 2016, but before that I led Kindle for, for many years. And the team, I would start, I would come in Chennai and in fact, we grew a team very quickly there that was absolutely the engine of ma many of the technical innovations of the Kindle business we brought around the world. So I first got to see the energy and the hustle and the innovation in all the best senses um, from our team there. And now I have the pleasure of coming to see Amit's team in Bangalore and, and, and to Hyderabad and other parts of the country. And it's just very energizing every time I get the chance to be here. All right, that's fantastic. Now. Amit, um, I have to say, it's the fourth edition of, of uh, the Sambhav Summit, and I must say I'm feeling quite strange that I'm actually asking the questions, because normally that's something that you do. So how is the energy in this room feeling? No, first of all, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to share the stage with you, uh, Vikram. Uh, you know, uh, it's so good to see everybody in person. Uh, you know, I'm just meeting a few sellers and, and our, our ecosystem partners and, and feeling the energy. So very exciting to be here. Um, it's also a very proud moment with, with the Chandrayaan landing, and so all of us are really proud of it, and I, I cannot but... <laughs> and I cannot uh, but reflect uh, the first uh, edition of Samba when Jeff made this prediction that the 21st century is India's century, and I think, if nothing else, this moment has only uh, uh, progressed that theory even further. So, uh, very excited and looking forward to our conversation. Right. Now, continuing with Ahmed, it's a milestone year, obviously, for Amazon as it hits the 10-year mark in the country. Uh, during this period, of course, Amazon has been a key driver of e-commerce in India. Now, e-commerce is, is everywhere. Would you just like to share your perspective on the 10-year journey that we've seen? That's true. So, we completed 10 years, uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of... Uh, it, it feels very incredible as you think about the journey. It's very humbling to feel when people come, back, come to you and talk about how Amazon in India has become such an integral part of their daily lives and livelihoods. Um, I also feel this 10 years has uh, very nicely overlapped with India's own digital revolution. So if you look at how India has progressed and how businesses have progressed, small, medium businesses have progressed, uh, it, there's, a, there's a great intersection between the two. And, um, uh, and it's no wonder that, you know, when people think of Amazon as India's Apni Dukan, uh, very trusted and uh, loved alternative, it, we feel very proud about it. Now, when I look at the 10-year journey, 
I think this journey is probably a decade of ingenuity, very much inspired by India's own SMBs in some sense. Uh, it was the first time when we introduced the notion of fast delivery. Our, in fact, the first TV ad was about next day delivery. Uh, we introduced the notion of cash on delivery. We introduced the notion of, uh, you know, bringing sellers to the marketplace. So I remember we used to run this thing called Chai Cart. We used to go to business districts and serve tea to businesses during uh, lunch breaks and evening tea breaks and just have conversation with sellers, just talking about online, how to get, how to get their products listed. Uh, so just being part of that whole journey and then building products that uh, allow sellers to ship products, whether it's easy ship and seller flex, then taking them global with global selling, uh, partnerships with, uh, with you know, uh, Indian Postal Service, Indian Railways. I think there is so many firsts for India and for Amazon overall from India that, that it's very heartening to see. And this kind of very clear overlap of our strategy with India's own vision is captured in our pledges. We pledged to digitize uh, 10 million SMBs, uh, enable 20 billion in exports, and create 2 million jobs. And I'm very excited to share that uh, we are on track. Uh, we have uh, you know, uh, touched 6.3 million SMBs, uh, enabled $8 billion in exports, which is growing every year faster than the previous year, and created 1.3 direct and indirect jobs. And 1.3 million indirect and direct jobs. Wow, that's fantastic, and I will ask you some more about the next steps in the investments that, that you're making. Um, Raj, digitization clearly seems to be at the heart of a lot of the growth that we are we are seeing in India, and, and, in, and of course it reflects in Amazon's journey as well. One particular game changer that I think everyone here in India is very proud of is that India stack, you know, a set of technologies that all speak to each other, which build on the growing internet penetration, and which then other companies can build on. Um, would you agree with that? Is, that? is that something that excites you when you look at what's happening in India? Well, I'd, I'd more than agree with it. Um, uh, I will just say that in the, the seven years I've had the privilege of working directly with, with Amit and the team here, if I think back about where we were in 2016 and 2017, and I'd explain to someone, India is going to introduce Aadhaar and digital identity. You know, we're going to make this transformation in payments with the UPI. It, it would have almost seemed a little magical, and yet it, not only has it happened, but you can see both the improvement that I think the government has in its ability to provision services for its citizens, and the incredible innovation that's occurring from businesses now that payments can be made easier and digitization of payment is so much more uh, broadly uh, accepted across the country. And then the way that I feel confident answering your question in the affirmative is this is a very, very big deal, is I have the privilege of working in the Amazon business in many capitals around the world. And I'm frequently in Brussels, in London, in Munich, in Tokyo, in Sao Paulo, and the transformation that's happening here has the attention of the rest of the world. If you describe to people what Aadhaar is, if you describe to people the change that occurs in the wake of something like UPI and other parts of the stack here, for, not just for the government, but for the economy, for the development of business, and for the development of innovation that that country then exports to the rest of the world, you see people's eyes get wider, and they ask me, tell me more about that. So uh, to me, that's the best evidence that I can report to you about the, not just the impact within India, but the example that I think the country um, is creating for, for others in, in the world. And, it, you know, I mean, I, the, I agree with you about the moon landing. I mean, what a headline kind of newspaper moment. But I, I can make an argument that as, a, as much example and invention and difference that's being made in the world outside of India from this innovation from, from this stack. You do have people saying we'd, we'd love to, to do something I like that. I think if you ask yourself, uh, if you, as, a, as, as an official, again, in any of those regions of the world I described, and you, you describe what we're able to do in the provisioning of services for citizens here and the ease of transactions and the ability for businesses to start up and invent and grow, those are things people want. And so they ask how. And we describe a little bit about what's happening here. Amit, mean, you've spoken in the past also about made in India innovations going global. You're in a larger role right now. You're, you're leading Amazon's businesses in emerging markets elsewhere. Do you think many of those innovations, many of those learnings that you've seen in India, many of those experiments that have been successful in India can help in other parts also of what you're handling? Yeah, I, um, 
I think first of all, um, it, is, it is true that retail is a very local uh, operation and lo very local business. And um, you know, there are a lot of local challenges that, that one has to look at, but at, at a very broad level, there are two or three things that customers deeply care about that we spend most of our energy on, uh, which, uh, which the, those two or three things, you know, more often than not is adding more selection, providing greater value to customers, making things faster and more reliable. Uh, and when we came to India, uh, it, 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 the e-commerce was a very different landscape in terms of infrastructure, in terms of customer expectations. But we, we knew that those three things, we took as an article of faith, are uh, important to customers in India as well, even though people didn't have an idea of what e-commerce should look like. And we, we work really hard to focus on these. And, and if you think about a few of the examples, you know, I, I still remember that uh, the notion of a seller being able to sell to any customer across India, we deliver to 100% of India's PIN codes, we are the only company that does that in India. To be able to do that, uh, they needed help. So they had, they had great business instincts, they knew what to make, how to price, but they needed help to get that product to the customer. And we were very early invested in a logistic service that would pick up from their location and, and take it to the customer. Um, similarly, there were sellers who ran, and uh, you know, we, we noticed that sellers had their shop, their house, the front of the shop, the, the back end warehouse, all in the same location. And that's been passed from generations down. Uh, and it was a very difficult decision for the seller to decide that what portion of this inventory should I move to a warehouse. And it was repeatedly becoming a, a clearer to us that we needed a product that essentially allowed them to convert their own location into an Amazon warehouse, if you will. And when they do get higher volumes, they could move those products to the warehouse. And that product was called Seller Flex. And then finally, when we were trying to deliver products to customers, uh, we would often ask the local shop, saying, where does Mr. XYZ live? And, and they knew precisely at where do we live and what's the right time to deliver so that they would be at home. And it was uh, becoming clearer that maybe we should just hand over the package to them and let them deliver. And they can earn money and we can get uh, more reliable delivery. And the customer would see a, a familiar face, which also mattered at a point where we were trying to build trust. So these are just examples of products that we built to deliver more selection, reduce cost of operations for our sellers, and to provide more reliable delivery. And all of them, at the end of the day, are relevant in geographies where that are similarly early stage in their evolution. So in my role, I, I'm very privileged to get experience with uh, different geographies that are very unique in themselves, but, but there is some underlying similarity in which you know, the sellers are uh, beginning to go online, or customers are experiencing fast and reliable delivery. And many of these uh, innovations have already been launched, in, in not only in the emerging markets, but also globally. So, so that's very exciting. And, and as Russ pointed out, there's a lot of innovation that's happening in India that is making its way in terms of inspiration elsewhere. And there's a lot of innovation happening elsewhere that's coming to India, and all in all, customers are seeing the benefit. So that temptation will continue. Innovate, try experiments, and if it works, then Absolutely, that's our DNA. You know, that's what we do well, and and uh, the ability for us to obsess with what customers really care about, uh, invent on their behalf, and think very long term is is very uniform culture across all the geographies that we are in. Russ, if I could ask you a broader question about what's what's happening in the world of technology sure. now, obviously from a market and other point of view, 2022 was rather challenging. You had the pandemic before that. But if you look at Amazon's latest financial results, it seems that business is on a, on a rebound. Yeah. Uh, do you think the challenges of the last few years are now behind us and there's a, a good period of uh, coming up ahead? Well, I'm very loath to make economic predictions. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd say a few things. First, you know, Ahmed's been at the company 24 years. I've been there 25 years. We've had the pleasure and challenge of, of working here through a variety of big economic cycles both kind of in the sector we worked in. I mean, in 2000, 2001, Amazon stock price went from $105 to $5. You know, my mom would call and tell me she still had my room. So, um, you know, we've seen many ups and downs over the course of time. In 2007 real estate crisis, you know, what I think happens within our company during these challenging periods that may, I hope, differentiate us in some way is 
Notwithstanding the real macro macroeconomic challenges of the past couple of years, we stay completely focused on customer inputs. You know, is our selection, do we, are we offering our customers everything they want to buy? Are our prices better than the other choices they have? Do we get it to their house faster? That is our stores business in every country in the world, even though the way it manifests itself is very different. And this last cycle had a few things that were unusual, even in the time that I've been there, we've not seen before. So obviously the pandemic was something I hope we don't see again, none of us do. And there is a whole level of personal challenge, way different than what we experienced at Amazon. And we were lucky we're not, we're not a travel business and we weren't a restaurant or anything, but we faced our own challenges, huge growth and demand, immediately working from, from home remotely and trying to figure out how to run the business, how to keep our people safe in the, in the parts of the business that, that were um, where people had to deliver and work in fulfillment centers and everything else. So we've come around through the other side of this. In 2022, of course, on top of the kind of challenging comparison of the pandemic, you had inflation at a rate around the world that even we've never seen in the, in, the, in the history of Amazon. And then even in some regions, things like the war, all created a kind of effect that, 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 that really were very challenging in terms of business results. But I think, as you said, if you look in 2023, that continued focus on customer experience. And customer experience includes working like crazy to have a cost structure that lets us offer great service at low prices. And so that's one big thing we've done in the last year is put the company in a leaner, meaner position to be able to really make sure that we deliver great service at great value. And, and I think in our external results, you can start to see the green shoots of that happening. I think we feel pretty optimistic about, about that continuing. Right. Um, of course, the, the related aspect of that are going to be technology trends now. Yeah. Amazon's, of course, known to be a technology pioneer. Yeah. But when you look around, there's a lot of excitement on technology itself in yes. the world right now. And clearly the big buzz this year is around generative AI and large language models. I want to get your perspective on that. How are you seeing this entire AI revolution? Well, I think a lot of the buzz happens because we individually now can see something that feels magical. Yeah. You know, this feeling of like typing a nuanced query into a search box and having the response come back and feel as if a person had written it to you, that is the thing that makes people feel fascinated, optimistic, and that creates a little, I mean, the, kind of the buzz you see around this. But, you know, our, our perspective is that this technology, I mean, it's almost like there's, there is a lot of, lot of buzz right now. I suspect, as we've seen with some of these other technical changes in the world, Maybe some of those things two years from now will have overpredicted what will happen. But I, we kind of think in the next 10 years, there won't be any aspect of our business that won't be transformed in some meaningful way by this. Um, so yes, certainly there'll be some things on the glass that customers see in terms of experience that will change. But actually, the way we work with sellers, the way that we work inside the company in terms of process, I think there won't be any way that we do our business today that AI won't transform. And we have been working for years. Frankly, all the way back when we first joined the company, we did this thing that was an early form of, if you will, intelligence, where we used collaborative filtering, filtering to tell a customer, people who bought this book bought this other book, which felt kind of magical to people at the time. Now it's become very mundane. Then the ML wave 10 years ago and this one now are going to allow us to do transformative things with the business. So it won't just be kind of on the front end, on the glass, you'll see it. But I think making processes more efficient, eliminating wasteful work, allowing the small businesses that power Amazon here in India to focus on making great products and letting this intelligence get some of the other um, obstacles out of the way to letting them reach customers, both India and in India and around the world. I think those are the things that are going to be as transformative as even the kind of, oh my God, a person feels like they just answered my query about the trip I want to take kind of thing. Right. Amit, you want to add anything to that, the exciting world of technology that we seem to be seeing? Well, I think uh, uh, a lot of these, while they can be convenience drivers in many geographies, I'm very optimistic there would be levelers in India. You know, I, I, I think the role of technology in India is a lot more than just about convenience. It has absolutely removed the equity gaps in many of the areas that you... I mean, the fact that a small business sitting 
in, in a corner where they could only serve their old community can now actually create a product and serve customers in New York is real, right? Now with the, with the capabilities that there are there, uh, they would not have to worry about are, they, are, are their product descriptions tuned to what customers in New York would care about? You know, how should they price it? How should they describe their product? Uh, you know, how should they serve the customer? Uh, you could have these co-pilots that come in the way of them and the customer where they don't need to be fluent in the language, but they could s still serve customers across the world. So I, 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 I think uh, uh, technology of this nature is going to be a big social economic leveler in this country, and, and it just bodes well to how India can progress. Right, I'm about to ask you as we draw to the end of this conversation, but I see we still have a little bit of time, so I'm going to try and sneak in one more Please. question to you, Ras. The journey of Amazon in, in India, Asal Pragati can now, any final thoughts you want to leave the audience with before I ask Amit about, some of the, 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 about his meeting with uh, Prime Minister Modi and other things? Well, it feels like it's happened in the blink of an eye. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very optimistic. Um, I have a lot of energy for thinking about the future. And frankly, when I come here, I, don't, I think less about the last 10 years, although we've told many stories on this trip about all the adventures that we've had together. But, but I, frankly, I'm very enthusiastic about the next 10. I think we're just getting started. I mean, the, the size of this country, the opportunity it has for economic growth generally, um, you know, I think it won't be long before this is the third largest economy in the world. And we feel fortunate to be one player that's a part of that transformation. And I think, I think um, you know, uh, it's hard to imagine what Amazon 10 years from now will be like in India, but I know it's going to be something great. Right. I mean, let me try and get some more details on that uh, from you. You and Andy, the Amazon CEO, uh, recently met Prime Minister Modi, and uh, Amazon announced a $15 billion investment in India. Um, where will these funds be invested, and what specific areas are you looking at in the next 10 years? Yes, it was, uh, uh, it was great to be able to uh, accompany Andy Jassy as CEO and meet the Honorable Prime Minister. Um, uh, you know, it was, as always, very exciting to hear his thoughts on overall digitization of the country, uh, the role of startups and small businesses in driving that digitization, uh, and, and, and also the role of exports and, and make in India that is going to be a big driver of how the economy grows. Uh, uh, and there was a moment in which uh, the, the Honorable Prime Minister mentioned uh, uh, something about Amazon, which kind of made me feel that I'm, I'm in a business review. He, he kind of said that, I know that you care about fast deliveries at low prices. Uh, and and it, it felt so humbling that he kind of uh, noticed what, what we really stand for. And he encouraged us to think about incumbent logistics infrastructure in India, whether it's Indian Railways or Indian Postal Service. So uh, it was a great, great moment to, uh, to kind of hear his thoughts. Uh, we also announced uh, our, the expansion of our commitment by an additional $15 billion investment uh, by 2030. Uh, today, uh, you know, in kind of uh, very much in line with the conversation that we had, I'm very excited to announce four things that we are launching. And that would give you a flavor of how we are continuously investing in the same three things that we talked about, you know, add more selection, make it easy for small businesses to run their businesses so that they can offer great value and to make deliveries uh, faster and, and more reliable. Uh, so number one, you know, we are very excited to announce our MAU with the Indian Postal Service. We have been partners with the Indian Postal Service for a while, and this will create the first of its kind seamless integrated cross-border logistics solution that would expand the opportunity of global selling to uh, businesses and entrepreneurs in the corners of the country. So this whole vision that I said, somebody sitting in the corner of the country and shipping products to customers in New York just becomes more real. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, I'm very excited to announce our partnership uh, with Indian Railways. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the freight corridors that we have, and we have announced a, a partnership to use the freight corridor, and that would allow the sellers in India to ship to customers across India faster. Uh, it also allows us to leverage our resources in Indian railways and make them more efficient. And again, this is you know the first of its kind usage of 
the corridor to ship products across the country. So I'm very excited for the partnership, and thank you to you. And, and the third uh, is, again, uh, you know, the evolution of starting with Easy Ship, where we pick products, and then Sellerflex, where we would transform the locations into warehouses. It's kind of a natural evolution. Uh, very excited to announce this product called Multi-Channel Fulfillment. Uh, and, and what that does is it allows small businesses, direct-to-consumer brands, to take advantage of our uh, fulfillment supply chain infrastructure. And they can have a, they don't have to worry about now where does their inventory, what does their fulfillment look like, irrespective of whether they are selling on Amazon or off Amazon. So no matter where you are a digital seller, you can run your operations using the Amazon fulfillment infrastructure. So very excited about, uh, about what can that do for sellers. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, in the spirit of future technologies, like we just talked about, um, yeah, and in the spirit of some of, we talk about how technology just opens up endless possibilities. So in the, sp in the spirit of the theme of this conference, we are very excited to announce uh, a generative AI solution for small, medium businesses. This is the first of its kind generative AI solution that we are launching in India for, uh, for small businesses. It's called Sahai. Uh, it, it's a play on help and AI. Uh, and, and you will get to experience in the experience centers outside, so I encourage you to go and try it out. But not to give away too much, it's a great way for sellers, no matter what their capabilities are, to ask questions, whether they want to register, list items, get help. Uh, expand their sales, be more successful. So I'm very excited to bring the power of generative AI to Indian small medium businesses starting now, and that should be pervasive going forward to all of them. So thank you. Well, Amit Ras, thank you so much. It was really inciting, uh, insightful discussion. Um, perhaps you should step off and allow people to yeah, experience. Yeah, I, I think I, to get a glimpse of what uh, you know, kya sambhav hai. I think we probably we should just watch the video. Right, let's 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 watch the video. Thank thank you both thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. At Amazon, while the customer enjoys the power of choice, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Customer को product तब पसंद आएगा जब उसको सारी detail दिखाएंगे, जैसे कि एक अच्छी photo, product के बारे में जानकारी, sizes, colors और material जैसी चीजें। मुझे ऐसा लोग बोल रहे थे कि Amazon पे उसमें आप जो है online business कर सकते हैं। लेकिन मैं अपने आप को असक्षम समझ रहा था कि मैं कैसे कर पाऊंगा डेटा जामुन रेटिंग्स रिव्यू सेल्स आमदेर आरो कस्टमर्स देर भालो भावे बुझते हेल्प करे आर उधर की दौड़कर उधर की टा प्रयोजन उटा आमदेर एस अ ब्रांड आमरा आरो भालो भावे बुझते पारी The power of AI is revolutionizing business processes and becoming a critical tool for progress across industries. With a vision to provide an amazing customer experience and cater to seller needs, we at Amazon India are embracing the power of generative AI to transform the way sellers do their business on Amazon. Introducing Sahai. A game-changer AI-based virtual assistant that makes sellers' life easy. Helping them analyze trends list products, generate attributes, and much more. And for those just getting started, selling on Amazon has never been easier. In addition to helping them list better, Sahai also helps sellers analyze their business better and bring important insights at their fingertips. From important festival dates, trends analysis, to what sells best, Sahai is here to unlock endless possibilities for lakhs of sellers in India.